Hi, I'm Cosio and my passion is music. This video is related to the Golden Ratio project, which aims to support teachers and students in the process of teaching and learning. In this introduction, I'd like to open the door for how creative music games can be effectively used in the classroom by any teacher, regardless of their musical education experience. To turn your lesson into a game and performance makes the students engage on a whole different level as you surely have experienced in your work. And music has the amazing power to instantly reach inside of our body and soul. Let's take a history lesson. We have a lot of names and numbers to remember. But what if each student is given the task to study his or her favorite character from this lesson and turn it into a song? Yes, that's right! A song about the hero, about his life and passion, about his great deeds. Of course, each student will have to study their character well and rehearse this song before it's ready to be shown in front of their classmates. Or if he's very brave, he might just impro, impro, improvise, improvise this song. The student sings in an I form, and it will be best if he is accompanied by a musician, which can be one of his classmates or someone invited especially for the presentation. He tells the story of how this person became the figure which is now world known. He tries to build this song dynamically, going for strong and quiet moments, depending on the emotion, and reaching a climax at the end. I'll give an example here with Leonardo. I was a curious child, always a curious child. I always turned in life. They didn't know why, but I was chasing every living thing. I wanted to see, I wanted to know, I wanted to understand. They paintings and drawings of everything I saw. When my family moved to Florence, I met the great Verrocchio and became his apprentice. Now I could paint the images of my soul And there were so many So many besides the artistic skills of drawing, painting, sculpting and modeling I was also studying drafting, chemistry, metallurgy, metalworking, plaster casting, leatherworking, mechanics and woodwork I was always so curious Leonardo the Curious Leonardo the Curious started to see things no one had seen before. The world wasn't ready for some of them. Maybe after 400 years they'll build my inventions. But that doesn't bother me. What's important for me is the spirit of creation. Leonardo the creator, that's my name. And please say, all oh, the birds free, please stop killing animals. Do you hear me, people? We're both here to live in harmony. Leonardo can see. <laughs> and so on. In this task, students can unleash their creativity while really getting into the historical period or piece of literature, biology, physics, geography, as the task can be adapted to any subject, even maths. I'm a square root and a tail now. This is how to calculate me. Calculate me, calculate me, yeah. The song can also be performed from the perspective of a continent or the human body itself. I have the red and white blood cells, blood cells, and I'm always full of parallels. The song can also be a duet shared among two of the students, 
There could also be a whole student choir repeating key phrases from the songs. Leonardo, Leonardo, the creator, the creator, Leonardo the inventor, the inventor, the inventor. <laughs> so that's a short demonstration of how music can be used creatively in teaching. I'm really excited to share more such games with you. See you very soon. Okay, this was just an example on the uh, YouTube channel of the project. You will find all the tutorials that we produce, and I will have to stop. Okay, this was another video, but it was not done within the project. And so, as I said, uh, if you go on the YouTube channel of the project, and as well as if you uh, go to the uh, project website, you will find all the tutorials that we produced. In my case, I said I produced several tutorials about the flipped classroom methodology. Okay, and um, this was the third phase of our scientific approach. The last step in the scientific path that we followed is the assessment and evaluation. What did teachers learn during the entire project? How they increase skills impact on uh, students' assessments? Did students feel more confident and motivated? So we are currently working to reply those questions as by the end of the project, we will produce a guide for teachers entitled after Toolbox for Teachers, which will be translated in all the project languages. If you are curious to, to, to know the results of this European project, you can just check in the next weeks on our website, on the website, of the golden ratio teaching uh, project, and you will uh, receive further and updated information. So I would like to thank you for the attention. And this was the first multiplier event that uh, is foreseen within this section. Let's move to the second multiplier event, to the second presentation of another European project in which Pixel is currently involved. The second multiplayer event is addressed to the RTV European project. And the title of the multiplier event is Rethinking Science Communication on Media. Let's see why such an ambitious uh, title for this, uh, uh, for this presentation. The RTV uh, project is funded by the European Commission in the framework of the Erasmus Plus program, uh, strategic partnerships for vocational education and training. The complete title uh, is the following, Key Competencies in Media Production for Radio, Film and Television. The project started in October 2019 and will be over by the end of next August. Let's see the partnership here. So the partnership is represented by Radio Romania, the national public radio service in Romania, which is also affiliated to EBU, the European Broadcasting Union. Then we have Collegial Technic Media, the only Romanian secondary pet vocational education and training school specialized for media production. There is Pixel and finally Université de Lyon. Once again, let's try to understand the connection between uh, the RTV projects and the new perspectives in science education conference. Humans learn about the world by collectively acquiring information, filtering it and sharing what we know. A support in the acquisition, filtering and sharing of information is provided by the media sector. 
On the other hand, missing information undermines this process. The repercussions are extensive without reliable and accurate sources of information. We cannot hope to halt climate, climate change, to make recent democratic decision or to control, for example, a global pandemic. Misinformation has reached crisis proportions. It poses a risk to international peace, interferes with democratic decision making, and endangers the well being of the planet and threatens public health. An example eating salad or injecting a disinfectant will prevent you from getting COVID 19, or holding your breath for 10 seconds is a test for COVID 19. We all heard about those fake news. The rapid global spread of COVID-19 has been accompanied by what the World Health Organization has described as a massive in infodemic. Huge demand for information on the disease and the many unanswered questions have created, in particular during the first wave of the pandemic, the perfect ground for fake news and conspiracy theories. This is not to say that science is broken, it's far from it. Science is the greatest of human inventions for understanding our world, and it functions uh, remarkably well despite all the, the different challenges. Anyway, we must be aware that misinformation undermines collective sense making and collective action. We must be aware that we cannot solve the problems of public health, social uh, inequity, or climate change without also addressing the growing problem of misinformation. And one of the best ways to reduce missing information is providing future actors of the media with quality training. And here we are with the RTD project, which aims at providing training for students in the field of media production, preparing the new job profiles for the media, media labor markets. So going deeply to the objectives of these European projects, Increase contribution to the application of innovative practices in media production, development, transfer, and enhancement of the joint initiatives pr to promote European cooperation in the radio, film, and television fields on a single market for audiovisual media services. This is the main objective of the RTV project. Specific objectives are to support media production, to provide teachers and students in the media sector with key competencies resulting from open education and innovative practices in a digital era, to increase the education and training of teachers and staff and trainers from partner institutions applying innovative practices in transmitting knowledge, to support the integration of DG, digital teaching learning activities to increase radio, film, and television products, and to increase broad access to media production. In order to reach those objectives, the RTV partnership has been working and is currently working to the production of the following outputs. Curricular auxiliary for teachers in media production. It's a kind of manual which contains a study on the European context, as well as methods and tools to be used with students in the field of media production for radio, film, and television. The second intellectual output is a curricular auxiliary for students in media production. So the focus is now on students and the, the manual contains three different sections, presentation of the field of media production and related professional qualifications, specific learning units addressed to students in media production, examples of evaluation technique that can be used to optimize motivation to support practical work. The third intellectual output is the methodology guide for the creation and operation of a laboratory of media. In this case, it is a modern method of teaching interdisciplinary knowledge for media students, and it is the best practice for real life, preparing them for work-based learning in media companies. The teaching concept is based on learning by doing, a simulation of real situation based on educational objectives. Intellectual output number four, methodology of working with, with digital instruments in media production. In this case, uh, about uh, this intellectual output, output it is an e-learning platform 
address to high school students who study in learning institution with a focus on media. The content of the e-learning platform is organized in 18 modules, each of them part of broader learning unit with specific learning outcomes. Then intellectual output five, methodology of inclusive management. The main objectives of this output are a better articulation between the content of media production training and the new professional practices, increased students' employability and proactive attitude of future professional facing the challenges and changes in media production. And then the last intellectual output, which is the digital platform for open educational resources. The platform includes academic research in the field of media production, full courses and course materials, videos, tests, software, and so on. So all the mentioned outputs are currently in the testing phase and will be soon available on the RTV websites. But I would like to focus a bit more on the intellectual output number five, which is the methodology of inclusive management. While approaching a brand new concept or even better, a new methodology to be understood and implemented starting from its meaning can reveal a winning strategy, especially if the methodology itself is composed by two different terms with multiple aspects. It is pretty common that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So the elements behind the word inclusive management are even more diversified than the terms inclusive and management taken separately. In order to better understand the implications linked to inclusive management, uh, the starting point here is represented by a systematic analysis of its meaning. Definition of inclusion. It is not simple to reach a unique definition of inclusive, but it is possible to identify two main strands. Inclusion is seen as a universal human right. The aim of inclusion is to embrace all, all people, irrespective of race, gender, disability, and uh, other aspects. The second strand, it is about giving equal access and opportunities and getting rid of discrimination and intolerance. The second strand is inclusion as the action or state of including or of being included within a group or structure in a constant exchange among participants of competencies, skills, experiences, and so on. So the starting point for this specific methodology is represented by the second definition of inclusive, that of inclusion as the inclusion within a group or structure in a constant exchange among participants of competencies, skills, and experiences. The second term which composed the, the, the inclusive management uh, uh, methodology is management. So many management thinkers have defined management in their own ways. Uh, summarizing up, management is a set of principles relating to the functions of planning, organizing, directing, and controlling, and the application of this principle in uh, uh, physical, financial, human, and informational resources efficiently and effectively to achieve organizational goals. So putting together the two elements, having in mind, as I said before, that the sum can be greater than the single elements, uh, we can just say that uh, we can just look for a possible definition of inclusive management as a guide to a group of people working in the organization and coordinating their efforts towards the attainment of the common objective. This guide is achieved also through the inclusion within the mentioned group of new people, providing the group itself with their competencies, skills, experiences, and above all, their personal perspective. So with reference to the possible training paths, within them it is possible to apply the inclusive management approach, whose applicability depends on the typology of target users, uh, to, different, uh, to different sectors. So if we try to use this kind of inclusive man management uh, uh, methodology in mass media industry, there are three different approaches. The first one is collaborative learning, teachers involving learners. The second one is the participation of experts schools involving professional journalists. 
And the third one is the crowdsourcing approach, journalists involving public. So the first possible approach of using the inclusive management in the mass media industry is the collaborative learning. Teachers in journalism and broadcasting directly involving students and asking them to provide their perspective during the lesson plans. This is the first version of the inclusive management approach implemented in the mass media industry. And this version easily falls into the definition of collaborative learning, which is an umbrella term for a variety of educational approaches involving joint intellectual effort by students or students and teachers together. Usually students are working in groups of two or more, mutually searching for understanding, solution or meanings, or creating a product. Collaborative learning activities can be different, but in mainly focus on students' exploration or application of the course material, not simply the teacher presentation or explication of, of it. The second uh, version of the inclusive management approach used within the media industry is consistent with the idea according to which a group can take advantage from the inclusion of new people and in particular from their competencies, skills, experiences and personal perspective. The group advantaging from the inclusive management approach is represented by schools, people providing their skills and competencies are professional journalists. Certified journalism teachers are instrumental in creating future journalists and teaching students essential industry skills such as researching, interviewing, writing, and editing. A secondary education in the fundamentals of journalism can inspire a lifelong passion for creating informative or opinion-based stories in words, pictures, or video. Inclusive management in the mass media industry foresees the possibility to rely on experienced uh, uh, people, on experienced experts who are professional journalists, in shaping future experts. A journalist acting as teacher exhibit expert level knowledge of the industry history and share lively best practices, enabling them to effectively help shaping the careers and livelihoods of the next generation of journalists. Relying on professional journalists enable prospective teachers to effectively plan and execute course curricula to help students develop essential skills, such as writing, interviewing and researching to, uh, 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 or editing and to create news for the, those future journalists. The last version of the inclusive management approach within the mass media industry is represented by the citizen journalism, which is also renamed after open source journalism, street journalism, or participatory journalism and democratic journalism. This last version is in line with the starting definition of inclusive management as a process in which emerged the necessity of a diversity of perspectives to promote civic discovery and capacity of the public to participate in the policy progress. Citizen journalism is based upon public citizen playing an active role in the process of collecting, reporting, analyzing, and disseminating news and information. The underlying principle of citizen journalism is that ordinary people, not professional journalists, can be the main creators and distributors of, or of news. Being that citizen journalism is yet to develop a conceptual framework and guidance and guiding principles, it can be uh, considered as subjective. There are different critics to this kind of phenomenon and most of the critics come from professional journalists and news organization, according to which citizen journalism is unregulated and of low quality. On the other hand, citizen journalism seems to be based on that passion for the truth, which tra that traditional journalism seem seems to have completely lost. And it is a phenomenon which can't be labeled as a minor one. So I will close this presentation with a question instead of asking for your question. What if traditional journalism or even more the scientific journalism learns from the emerging needs to inform which is typical of citizen journalism in order to recover its origins? So as I said before, all of the intellectual outputs which uh, uh, have been produced in the framework of the RTD projects 
are currently in the testing phase, they will be available on the project website and there will be all the six intellectual output I described before. So just to summarize up the curricular auxiliary for teachers in media production and for students in media production, the methodology guide for the creation and operation of a laboratory of media production, the methodology of working with digital instruments in media production, the inclusive management methodology that I just described in detail, and the methodology for digital platform for open educational resources. So this was just a presentation of the RTV European project. I thank you for your attention. And this was the last presentation within the uh, new perspective of science education conference. I would like to thank all of you for your participation, for your attention, for the interesting inputs that you shared with all of your colleagues during these two intensive days. And I think that it's enough. Thank you. I will uh, um, also say uh, just very few words <laughs> as an integration to what Antonio just said. Uh, if uh, we can see if there are uh, some uh, online participants as well. Stefan was online. Okay, Stefan, you see here. No, I think it's why not anyway. So, okay, but just solo, just solo step on that. Yeah, ah, okay. So I can stand, I think. So um, thank you for being here until the end, those of you who stayed, and thank you for uh, your uh, contribution uh, to uh, the conference. Um, I think this year once again uh, we managed to share. Uh, interesting results and everybody actively contributed and uh, I hope next year I will see you again and there will be more people here in Florence because I think we all need to start again our normality and being back to living our sort of normal life. So once again thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoyed the conference as I did um, personally every time I think I learned a lot um, and I hope you did too. I would also like to thank uh, Pixel staff, but now <laughs> most of us are Pixel staff. And of course, first of all, Alessia, because she has been, it was her first time for the conference. She has been uh, very, very good. I think so. Thank you, uh, Alessia, for your contribution and everyone else uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you.